guys, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel. So, uh, in this part, we are looking at uh, painting the vehicle and a wee bit of weathering. Um, so, um, yeah, that's that's basically what we're looking at in this episode. So, we'll get straight into it. So before we start priming the model, we need to prime all the brass parts. Now what I'm using is AK Interactive uh, Burnished Metal. Uh, this is generally used for uh, burnishing uh, white metal tracks, but I found it's actually quite good for priming brass parts. Now what we need to do is quite simply, straight from the bottle, uh, just plaster the brass part in it and sort of give it uh, a good rubbing so it all starts to react. And as you can see, there's a few parts there that haven't quite taken. Um, that's mainly because there's a bit of super glue there. So we don't have to worry about that because the prime is still going to take uh, to those parts. So as you can see here, uh, that's how it should uh, pretty much look like. Uh, but what we need to do once we've used that burnishing fluid is completely wash it off. Because if we don't, we'll start end up getting parts um, basically like this one. This is basically when I thought I'd... Uh, rinsed it off. I mean, I did use just a paintbrush with some water on, uh, left it for a while, come back to it, and there's obviously still some solution in there because I didn't actually wipe it off, which probably would have helped um, as well. But what it does is it basically continues to eat uh, at the brass parts. So it's probably better if you actually get some proper uh, brass primer. So once we've done all that, we can then move on to uh, priming the entirety of the model uh, and I've used uh, Vallejo's uh, matte black primer for this. So that's all nice and primed. We move on to what we're going to do next and is base it in Comart's uh, Dark Rush. Now, this is the first time I've actually used uh, these uh, paints before. Um, they're nice and thin, uh, great to use straight uh, through the airbrush. Um, it's quite diluted, so you might need a, a couple of passes uh, over the top of the model, but the more you put on, the slight variations in rust you get. So, um, you know, play around with it a little bit if you use this, um, but you can, you know, it can lead to some really uh, great effects. Now, all those, this stuff, I don't think is harmful. Um, it's got quite a, tangy smell to it so maybe put a uh, mask or a respirator on uh, for you, uh, you know using this through uh, your airbrush so there you go it leaves a really really nice finish uh, matte, well matte finish uh, afterwards so now we can move on to the next part which is basically put in uh, all I put three layers of AK interactives uh, chipping fluid on uh, which obviously is in preparation for some chipping uh, after that, I've used a mix of uh, Tamiya Buff and Desert Yellow. I can't remember the exact ratio, but I think most of it was buff. So I think we're looking at maybe 60-70 um, buff and you know, 30-40 uh, Desert Yellow. Because what I wanted to try and achieve is a sort of bleached uh, version of the Desert Yellow. So to get our chip look, all we need to do is add some water. What this does is reactivates uh, the chipping solution underneath. And it's also good to use a selection of fairly stiff uh, brushes, uh, which then starts to scrape away the paint and reveal a uh, uh, rust coat underneath. Also what you can use is uh, something like a fairly sharp uh, needle or even a cocktail stick, and that can give us uh, more of a scratch than just a sort of uh, flaking of paint. But now and again, just use a dry brush and just wipe away any of the excess paint left on top. Now next, armed with some white tack, roll into some very long sausages. Um, all we do is mark out uh, the next layer um, of camo. Also before that, put in a layer of chipping solution uh, underneath that first. Uh, and then photographing uh, where your existing chips are uh, so we can try and uh, you know match those chips 
uh, from what's underneath. So what we're doing now is, is on top of the chipping solution, uh, applying a fairly light blue. I used AK Interactive uh, Zors Blue with a little bit of uh, Vallejo White mixed in. Uh, again, to sort of brighten the, the blue as, you know, for more of a, a bleaching from that hot desert sun. So next, going back to our reference photos that we'd have taken earlier and start chipping away um, exactly the same as before over that blue. Now I have uh, purposely removed uh, some extra bits as this paint would have been painted over the top of the base uh, desert yellow. And you know, you do tend to find that this paint will chip away and reveal uh, the existing paint underneath uh, as well as our chips. Uh, so it gives you a bit more of that extra sort of uh, worn effect. So there we go, that's uh, pretty much all the uh, chipping done. Uh, and I think it does give that nice, warm looked battered of the desert. Right, so next the decals. There's not many on this, so it's nice and quick and simple. So what we're gonna do is we'll obviously soak the decals while they're soaking up using some micro set uh, solution. This helps uh, fix uh, the decals uh, to the model. Um, so we'll put some of that solution down first, and then once our decals are ready, we will put them onto a bit of tea towel uh, to sort of take away some of the uh, excess water on there place it onto the model and then give it a bit of a quick wiping over with the same solution and let it dry slightly on its own for a little bit and then again using a bit of paper towel to take up any extra uh, liquids uh, on the model and then over the top of that we'll put some micro sole and what this will do is it will soften up the decals and make them to conform to any recesses in the panel or like in the case this on the bonnet they'll actually conform to the shape of the bonnet and with a bit of luck it also takes a little bit of that sheen uh, off the decal then once we've done all that we will uh, put a matte coat on and seal all that in so of course some of the decals will cover up some of that rust that we've done earlier and make them look a bit weird as they've got a random cut off so we'll go over the same paint and just uh, blend it in. So next I've actually put a uh, gloss coat on um, and then used uh, some Tamiya panel liner uh, around the model, obviously around any uh, sort of uh, recesses and obviously like panel lines, take away uh, any excess or little blobs uh, of panel liner that we don't want. Of course we've obviously done the same on the back and particularly 
on the bed of the truck to make all them panel lines stand out a little bit more. So that's what I'm left to do now is glue the uh, front cab to the subframe and there we go. That's all the uh, painting and weathering done so far on the main vehicle. So there you go guys, that's pretty much I think uh, the main part of the vehicle done. Uh, next episode uh, we will be looking at mainly doing all the little uh, accessories uh, that go in mainly in the rear part uh, of uh, the vehicle. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Um, if you have and you're new to the channel please uh, like and subscribe. Um, any comments be cool good or bad just let us know what you think um and as always i will catch you in the next one Bye.